Hi, welcome to The Running Channel. I'm Kate and at the London Marathon this year, I am going to be going for a Guinness World Records title attempt for the fastest marathon in a full body animal costume. I'm going to learn all about how to get this process underway, how I apply and what the hoops you need to jump through are. But first things first, let's talk about the most important thing, the costume. So now I've got the costume. What's next? Well, how about some tips from someone who's done this quite a few times before? I'm here with Sarah Dudgeon, who is the proud owner of no fewer than four Guinness World Records titles. So Sarah, tell me a bit about your first title. The first Guinness World Records that I have is fastest marathon dressed in a wedding dress. I have also got the fastest marathon dressed in a nurse's uniform. I've also run the fastest marathon dressed as a monk. And I also have the record for fastest marathon three-legged female. So that's two girls doing it at the same time. Great, and so what tips do you have for someone running in costume for the first time? Well, step one is to apply through Guinness World Records because you can't just turn up in the day in your panda outfit. <laughs> um, I think you, it would be a good idea for you to talk to them. And um, the second, second thing I would do, which I think you're doing quite well on as well, is to try the outfit on. So well done, this is a good step. You don't want to be just turning up to the marathon store on the day. It sounds really obvious, but all the costumes are different. We've seen a few this morning and they all just have their own little idiosyncrasies. So you need to just try them on and, and see. Rubbing is an issue. I have to say in The Bride, for example, when I got to the end, someone did say, is that, is that blood on the dress? And I had had a bit of, a bit of rubbing where I hadn't, I hadn't appreciated it. So let that be less than we don't want that happening to the panda. Not so. on my white bit. No, exactly. It does show. Um, so do try it. Um, it is, it is as well as useful. It's actually quite fun doing a little run in, in costume. And uh, it gives you kind of two sides. One is the side of, is it rubbing? How does it feel? And the other side that is quite fun practice is you get to hear everyone's, everyone's jokes that you're going to hear for <laughs> several hours. <laughs> they all come out. You, um, it, it is quite funny and um, you do find yourself laughing the whole way. But when you get to 26 miles, you tend to have heard most of the panda jokes. By then. Hmm. I wonder what the panda joke is going to be. Bam bamboozled? <laughs> hmm. I have to think about that one. <laughs> So now I've got some tips about running in costume, I'm off to see the Guinness World Records team to find out how the process works. Because it's totally normal to go across London in your panda costume, right? So I've come here to Guinness World Records office to meet Mark McKinley and to learn more about how to get accepted to run a world record at London Marathon and the whole process behind it. So I'm off inside to meet him now. Hi Mark, thanks very much for having me here. Um, 
Can I just ask you to explain a little bit about how um, Guinness World Records works with the London Marathon in particular to, um, to generate hopefully lots of records every year? So we've been working with the London Marathon for 12 years now. This will be our 12th year. And basically the idea is that we provide on the day adjudication to any runners that are coming and attempting a Guinness World Records title. So yourself, uh, fastest marathon dressed in a full body animal costume, um, right up to the fastest marathon by a pair of siblings. Um, so we are there on the day to check the costumes, make sure everything's okay, and then to verify whether or not they've achieved the records right at the finish line. Okay, so if um, if you wake up one morning and decide, you know what I've always wanted to do, set a record in a marathon, um, how do you go about doing that? Just explain to me the process of applying and getting approved and so on. So it's simple to apply. It's just going onto our website, which is guinnessworldrecords.com and just creating an application. So we've already got loads of titles um, for various costumed uh, attempts and challenged attempts uh, for running marathons and half marathons and people are welcome to suggest new options as well if there's something that we don't currently monitor and then once people have made their application what we do is we process them and we send them out the guidelines so the rules and requirements of the attempt whether that be they've got to have a weighted pack for some of our weighted pack records uh, saying how much it's got to weigh, explaining that they need to film it being weighed before and after the attempt. And also there's a full list of evidence requirements that people need to provide if we are not there. Um, so things like video evidence, having witness statements, having proof from the uh, race itself that it is an official race. So I guess that's what makes the London Marathon Partnership easier for people to go for an attempt in is that obviously there's a lot of witnesses, there's a lot of evidence. Yeah, exactly. So that's the good thing with the London Marathon is that we are actually there on the day. Uh, so we've got a whole team that come down right from the morning, right to the very end when the last person's crossing the line uh, just to be there and just to check that all the rules have been followed to make sure all the costumes are as they should be and to make sure that we get some records on the day. Cool. So a few questions that people have asked me since I told people that I'm doing this. Um, uh, so like things, people say, are you allowed to remove your costume at any point? Like obviously with this, quite hard to get some water. So what are the rules around what you can and can't do while you're running the course? So all records have got different rules that apply. For yourself, uh, you're obviously allowed to remove the heads, but if you do, then you have to remain static. You can't make any forward momentum whilst you're wearing the head. But once you've taken it off, once you've had some water, put it back on and then you can start off again. Cool, yeah, that makes sense. Someone said that I should go past the water station and then go back a little bit just to make sure that I hadn't moved forward too far. <laughs> yeah, I think as long as you're not moving while you've got the head on, I think yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, so every year, how many, roughly how many applicants do you get for records during London Marathon particularly? So it varies from year to year. Uh, this year, I think we've got 84 runners. No, that's a lie. We've got 84 record attempts mm -hmm. and there's over 90 runners actually taking part on the day. Um, the numbers have grown massively from the first year uh, that we did it 12 years ago. Um, but it's great just to see how many people get involved and how many people want to be there and to achieve a Guinness World Records title. So the, num the difference between the 84 and the 90 is because some people are doing it as multiple pairs or teams of people doing a record. Exactly. So we've got some people running in a six person costume and uh, we've got people running handcuffed together this year. Um, so yeah, so that's what makes the numbers higher than the number of record attempts. Okay. And um, are there any particular record attempts that stand out for you as being particularly crazy or memorable um, in your head? I mean, I think one of the most impressive attempts we had, they were actually unsuccessful, unfortunately, but it was um, a three-dimensional dinosaur, um, and it was the most incredible costume. It was just a f oh, almost a full-size uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> it was this huge dinosaur costume that unfortunately just didn't make it round, uh, and I think the attempt's not on two separate occasions, but then the costume just didn't quite get round. But just to see somebody take something that large and that big and just to try and get through the marathon is incredible. I couldn't run a marathon not in costume. <laughs> just to see someone trying to do it in a costume like that is just fantastic. Sure. 
So what happens if you, when you cross the finish line in your costume, what happens at that point? So we've had a team that worked, like I say, the entire day. So we've got spotters right the way along the track, keeping an eye on uh, the costumes, making sure that people are doing what they should be doing. And then at the finish line, we've got the times being tracked. So we're tr tracking all of our runners. And then as they come across, we'll know whether or not they've been successful. If they have been successful, then we greet them with a certificate get our picture taken and then uh, there's some more photographs to be taken afterwards. If they've not been successful, then we're, we're there for a hug. <laughs> well, I'm dressed in the right outfit for that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, I suppose the last thing I need to do is to get some training in. Bye!